Praise God, we come to you once again in the grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Holy Week and it is time for people to be more reflective, to be more spiritual as they say. Because traditionally, Holy Week is a time when people just take a break from everything and focus on the things that are spiritual. And I hope that we are doing the right thing. We are doing the correct celebration of the so-called Holy Week. And today I am going to try to study or uh, put a study on the journey of the Lord Jesus Christ on the so-called Holy Week. When you say, Holy Week, it is seven days. And uh, it is called the Holy Week because it is when the Lord Jesus Christ came at the culmination of his earthly life to be able to fulfill his purpose. And that is to be crucified, to die on the cross, and to resurrect on the third day. So we are going to make efforts to be able to go through that, you know, the Lord's journey, the Lord's uh, most significant events on his final week on earth before he accomplished his plan of redemption. So I remember when I was young, there were so many superstitions about Holy Week. Napakarami pong mga paniniwala mga tradisyon, mga sabi-sabi patungkol po sa mahal na araw. At uh, ang ilan lang sa mga iyon ay uh, bawal maligo. <laughs> Naranasan niyo po ba yon na sinabihan kayo ng inyong mga nakakatanda na huwag kayong maliligo sapagkat patay ang Diyos or uh, dahil ma mahal na araw. Naalala ko pa po nung kabataan namin ay uh, bawal po ang tumawa. Bawal maglaro bilang mga bata. Bawal ang magsaya sapagkat anilay ito'y panahon ng pagdadalamhati sapagkat patay ang Diyos. Naalala ko rin po noon, sabi nila bawal kang magkasugat kasi matagal gumaling. Or uh, bawal kumain ng karne kaya ang kinakain lang po ay isda at gulay. Bawal daw magpukpok ng martilyo o gumawa ng mga gawaing bahay sapagkat kapag ikaw ay nagpupukpok ng martilyo para mo raw uling pinupukpok si Kristo. <laughs> Amen? At uh, marami pang iba. Bawal magputol ng kuko kasi baka hindi na raw tumubo or uh, bawal uh, tumawa sapagkat uh, kinakailangan malungkot lang dahil patay ang Diyos. So these are some of the superstitions about Holy Week. But is this really the true meaning of Holy Week? Ito po ba ang tunay na kahulugan ng mahal na araw? Yung iobserba natin ang ating mga ritual, ang ating mga tradisyon. Marami po kapag mahal na araw ay namamanata, sila po ay lumalakad, walang mga chinelas. Prior to the pandemic, people were doing that. You know, they were uh, doing panata. Naglalakad po sila ng walang chinelas mula groto hanggang antipolo. Naglalakad po ng uh, walang chinelas mula po sa kanilang uh, uh, mga simbahan. Amen? Sila po ay nagkakaroon ng mga bisita iglesia. At marami pa pong mga tradisyon at kinamulatan. At isa po doon ay yung uh, mga tao'y pinu pinaparusahan ng kanilang mga sarili. They uh, try to copy what the Lord Jesus Christ has done, crucifying themselves on the cross and making a spectacle for the people to see. But Holy Week has nothing to do with all the things that I have said. Holy Week has nothing to do with efforts of men. Because Holy Week is totally all about God and his plan of redemption 
the sacrifice of His Son Jesus Christ on the cross in order for us to be redeemed from our sin. So today, Holy Week is just a continuation of our journey. At the moment we accepted and put our faith in the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and how we are living this life in order to give honor and glory to His name. That is Holy Week. You know, it is just a remembrance. It, there is no effort to it. Because if you put effort to it, you are trying to duplicate what Jesus Christ has done by, you know, uh, putting, subjecting your body to torture and harm and then crucifying yourself and hanging on the cross, just like what the Lord has done. Yun po ay uh, man, human effort. And, you know, Holy Week is not, eff is not making effort to save ourselves. Because once and for all, Jesus Christ saved us. It was just a one act of sacrifice. And we can never duplicate that. Amen? Wala pong sinabi ang Bible na ito po ay gawin natin taon-taon na tayo po ay magpapako sa cross, tayo po ay mamanata, sapagkat ito po ay tinatawag na human efforts toward salvation. But no, we can never be forgiven, we can never be saved, we can never attain salvation through our human efforts, traditions, and rituals because the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself once and for all and it could never be duplicated so by the grace of god today let us go back to the lord's journey from you know the first sunday the psalm the they call it the triumphal entry to jerusalem the palm sunday as they say until the easter sunday when the lord jesus christ has risen from the dead so Let's go to day one. Day one is Sunday. You know, it is not Thursday. Day one of the Holy Week is Sunday. And that is recorded in Matthew 21. Okay? Verse 2 to 3. If I may uh, read, the Lord has given a specific instruction to two of His disciples because he is planning to go back to Jerusalem. The Lord Jesus Christ is planning to go back to Jerusalem. And uh, this is on the final week of his uh, earthly life. So in verse 2 of Matthew 21, it says, The Lord Jesus said, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Okay, so very specific po and very clear yung direction ng Lord. Siya po ay nagutos na kumuha po ng isang asno at isang uh, colt or baby ng asno. Sapagkat ito po ang kanyang sasakyan patungo, papasok, sa Jerusalem. Makikita po natin na ang Panginoon po ay nagutos at ang sabi po niya ay oh, pumunta ka at kunin ang donkey because there is already a ready donkey that is tied so that when the disciples will go and talk to the owners of the donkey, they will give it to them. And indeed, that's what happened. The disciples went and when they arrive and talk to the owners of the donkey, right away, no resistance, the owners of the donkey and the colt gave it to the disciples. And so we saw later on that this was the same donkey that Jesus Christ rode on when he entered Jerusalem. Now, what insight, spiritual insight can we got, get here? Wow. That if God tells you to do something, that if God tells you to go somewhere, do not resist, do not complain, do not question, because the Lord has already went ahead of you. 
nauna na ang Diyos doon. Inihanda na niya ang iyong uh, pupuntahan. Inihanda na niya ang iyong uh, patutunguhan. Inihanda na niya ang iyong mga pangangailangan at ito ay matutugunan. When the disciples went to get the donkey, it was ready. Amen? Because it is the will of God. When God tells you to do something, do not worry. Because everything will be alright. Everything will be fine and everything will be okay. Amen? Because it is the will of God. So when you are doing the will of God, there is no resistance. There is no struggle. Sapagkat nauna na ang Diyos. Inihanda na niya ang lahat. So, in the same manner that if you are doing something in which you find that there is opposition, there is struggle, there is difficulty, you should question yourself. Am I in the middle of the will of God? Or am I not doing the perfect will of God? Because there seem to be a lot of hindrances, a lot of obstacles, a lot of problems and struggles. Because one sign that you are doing the will of God is that everything just goes on smoothly. Amen? Dumadaloy ng napaka, napaka-inam at napakabilis at napaka-maayos ang lahat. Wala pong kaguluhan. At ganun po ang uh, nangyari po dito sa pag-uutos ng Panginoon na kunin yung asno at yung colt in order for him to ride on it when he enters Jerusalem. Amen? So kung ikaw ngayon ay nasa isang desisyon, kung ikaw ngayon ay nasa isang uh, gawain na kung saan hinahanap mo ang kalooban ng Diyos, tingnan mo kung ito ba ay uh, maayos, mainam, at uh, maluwalhating nagaganap o it is full of struggle. So, when it is full of struggle, you question. It might not be God's will for you. Because if it is God's will, just like the disciples, they went and everything just went on smoothly. They were able to get the colt and the donkey. Amen. So now, let's proceed. When Jesus Christ rode on the donkey to enter Jerusalem, you can see that it was recorded many people were waving their palms, their, their uh, branches of palms, in order to welcome Jesus in their meads. Amen? So, makikita po natin dito na the Lord has gained a lot of followings. The, the Lord has gained a lot of supporters. Ang dami pong sumalubong sa kanya. They were so excited. And this is just a fulfillment of what was prophesied in the Old Testament, specifically in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the fall of a donkey. Wow, this was years, way years before the New Testament, before the coming of the Lord. It was already prophesied that a king will come to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And that's exactly what happened. The king rode on his donkey and he went on to Jerusalem. Let us see, what is a king? A king is a ruler of a kingdom. And as a ruler of a kingdom, he has authority, he has power, he has wealth. But all of this were just dismissed by the Lord Jesus Christ. The stereotypes that the world has known of what a king is was just broken down by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because here comes Jesus, the King, the Messiah, riding on a donkey instead of a horse, you know, a mighty horse. He came in alone and just surrounded by his 12 disciples on his entry to Jerusalem. He was not carrying with him a legion of army. Wala pong mga sundalo, wala pong uh, 
mga matitikas na sundalo na sa kanya po ay naka-escort sapagkat siya po ay mag-isa na napapaligiran lang kanya, ng kanyang mga alagad. So we can see here that the crowds were so ecstatic welcoming him because the crowd knew that this is a prophecy fulfilled. Amen? Ito ay isang propesya na naganap in their very eyes. Dumating ang kanilang hari, dumating ang kanilang tagapagligtas. Walang iba kundi ang Panginoong Jesus. And so maybe, just maybe, these people were expecting Him to rule over Rome. Amen? Because Roman, the Roman Empire was the existing empire that was ruling over the Jews at this point in time. And so, in their excitement, they were waving palm branches, and uh, the palm is a symbol of victory. And they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And this was recorded. And this saw, this was seen by the Sanhedrins, the religious people in Jerusalem. Nakita po nila ito and it gave them signals. Amen? Ito po ay uh, naging signal na what is this? What is this? What is happening? Why are the people so ecstatic? Bakit sila nagkakagulo for somebody like this man from Galilee? For, for somebody like this uh, Jesus who is from Nazareth, son of a carpenter and a carpenter himself. But people were so clamoring for the Lord. People were so ecstatic for Him. They were welcoming Him. Amen? So, this sent signals, warnings to the Sanhedrin, to the religious people in Jerusalem. And we are going to learn that later on. Sila po ay uh, nabulabog. Sila po ay uh, nagkaroon po ng uh, agam-agam at pagkatakot sapagkat It seems like their authority and their clout is being threatened by this man riding on a colt, riding on a donkey. Amen? But the people knew that this was their king. This was the son of David. And they were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the king of kings. Amen? So, uh, napaka, napaka matagumpay po ng entry na ito ng Panginoon. Pero hindi po lahat ay natuwa. Hindi po lahat ay uh, uh, nagkaroon ng pagtanggap. At sa panahon pong ito, ang mga Sanhedrin at ang mga religious leaders sa pangunguna ni Kaipas ay nabulabog at sila po ay naaalarma. Alam niyo po, kapag tayo po ay nagtatagumpay, hindi po lahat ay natutuwa sa ating tagumpay. Amen? There are some people who are riddled with, riddled with the jealousy. There are some people who are insecure that they do not want us to triumph. They do not want us to be victorious. They do not want us to succeed. And if we are succeeding, if we are successful, if we are triumphing, if we are victorious, they will do anything and everything to stop that. And it was at this point that the Sanhedrin, by the, by the leadership of Caiaphas and uh, all of the religious leaders in Jerusalem were planning something. They were planning something against Jesus because they were threatened by this man. They were threatened by the simple man riding on a donkey. Amen? He did not even show his force. He was a king, but he did not have a, a kingdom to boast of. He is the king, but he did not have the wealth to boast of. He was the king, but he did not have the power to boast of. You know, a legion of armies surrounding him. But still, he was a threat. Amen? Siya po ay a threat sa mga nasa pwesto. Siya po ay threat sa mga nasa posisyon. Amen? Wala pong ginagawa ang Panginoon. Sumakay lang siya ng asno, pero ito po ay nagpabaliktad ng mundo ng mga nasa pwesto sapagkat alam nilang malapit na ang kanilang katapusan. <laughs> malapit na po ang kanilang uh, reign of uh, 
oppression and repression. And I tell you, brethren, if I may prophesy that the time is nigh, the time is coming that the arrogance of those who are in leadership shall be put to end. The arrogance of those who are in leadership will stop because the Lord will break it. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ when he was riding on a donkey, you know, it is a symbol of humility. It is a symbol of, symbol of simplicity. Amen. When he entered Jerusalem, it was a signal that his simplicity will bring down the arrogance of the mighty. It, his his uh, humility will bring down the pride of those in power and position. Amen. And so all truth is parallel. In these days, the Lord will continue to shape the political arena, the economic arena, and everything that could be shaken will be shaken by God in order for Him to prove that arrogance, pride, insecurity, and jealousy has no place in the kingdom of God. And all of this will find their end. At ito po ang uh, nais na mensahe ng Panginoon sa ating lahat. Na wala pong uh, makakatagal na kataasan, kayabangan, at uh, arrogance sa Panginoon. Sapagkat ang Panginoon po ay simbolo at uh, modelo ng kababaang loob. Modelo at simbolo ng uh, pagkasimple, simplicity. Amen? So, him riding on that donkey, him riding on that donkey entering Jerusalem is just a perfect picture, you know, that power and uh, power is equated with humility. Amen. He, Jesus Christ, his impact was so powerful. People were clamoring for him. Amen. People were loving him and they were waving palm branches unto him. To welcome him. Amen. But this did not sit right with the jealous Sanhedrin's and religious powers. So, yan po yung nangyari sa Palm Sunday. Amen. The spiritual insight that we can get from that is that Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem in a humble way, but still people loved him. People cherished him. People welcomed him with their open arms. At yan po ang nice din ng Panginoon sa atin, that we will welcome the Lord in our hearts with an open heart and an open mind. Amen? Whatever religion you have, whatever denomination you belong to, you need Jesus in your life and you have to raise your hand like those palm branches and wave and say, Lord, I love you, I need you, come into my heart. Amen? Because it is the Lord Jesus Christ whom we need. So, yung po yung uh, spiritual insights na makikita po natin on the first day of the Holy Week, which is a Palm Sunday. Amen? And uh, this is the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. So, after the triumphal entry to Jerusalem, the people loved the Lord as well as the Sanhedrins hated Him. Jesus Christ withdrew and went back to Bethany. Bethany was just, you know, 20 miles away from Jerusalem. And uh, Bethany, as you may recall, is the hometown of the friend of Jesus, Lazarus, and the sisters, Mary and Martha. So, he spent the night there with his disciples. And what is next to Sunday? Monday, okay? Monday is the next day of the Holy Week. And what happened the next day on a Holy Monday? Jesus returned with his disciples to Jerusalem. Amen. After the triumphal entry, and then he retreated a little bit. And then the next day on a Holy Monday, Jesus went back to Jerusalem. Along the way, in his return to Jerusalem, he saw a fig tree. And he cursed the fig tree because it failed to bear fruit. Makikita po natin na, na ni-record ng Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ cursed this fig tree. Why? 
because it did not bear fruit. So what is a tree if it is a fruit-bearing tree if it, is, if it does not bear fruit? So it is useless. Wala po itong pakinabang. Amen? Pero purihin po ang Panginoon. Marami po kaming fruit-bearing trees dito. Our mango is already, you know, bearing fruits so many that we cannot just uh, keep up to it. Naglalaglagan na lang po yung uh, mga mangga namin at uh, pinamimigay po namin sapagkat hindi naman po namin kayang kainin lahat. So, what am I saying here? Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree because it was not bearing fruit. There are two school of thoughts in here. Some school of thoughts say that the cursing of the fig tree represented God's judgment to the religious people, religious leaders of Israel. They have the facade of religiosity and spirituality but the reality is that they are dead inside they are dead spiritually because if not they should have been bearing fruits nakikita sana sa buhay nila yung kanilang mga bunga pero wala pong bungang nakikita and so they are good for nothing and so the lord cursed this fig tree Ganon din po sa mga religious leaders ng Israel. They had connections. Kaya po, kaya po uh, plinano po nila at nagtagumpay sila na kasuhan si Jesus Christ ng false accusations. Trinay po ni si Jesus Christ sa isang mock trial and they succeeded in uh, giving him false uh, accusations like treason and sedition because they had deep connection with the political powers would be of the Roman Empire. In Judea, where these things happened, in Jerusalem, which is the capital of, the, of Judea by then, ang mga Sanhedrin po ay merong malawak na connection sa mga political powers. Kagaya po ni Poncio Pilato. Kaya naman po si Jesus ay kanilang successfully napa, na, na try in, in, a, in a mock court and uh, they were able to give him his uh, judgment, and that is crucifixion. But what am I saying? These leaders are good for nothing because they have the facade of spirituality, but inside they are dead spiritually. Sila po ay uh, mga... Sila po ay mga... Wala pong uh, buhay. Wala po silang espiritualidad sapagkat sa oras pong ito, uh, ang Panginoon po ay uh, judgment po ang ibinaba sa kanila. Amen? Pero in the same manner, itong mga, itong mga Sanhedrin na ito ay uh, meron po silang power. Meron po silang political clout as well as religious clout. But people are tired of them. Amen. That's why when somebody like Jesus came along and he was talking and speaking about words that are, you know, powerful and changing, nagbabago ng buhay, ang mga salitang namumutawi sa bibig ng ating Panginoon ay nagbabago ng buhay. At ito po ang nais ng mga tao. Ito po yung gusto nilang marinig. Kaya naman po sinusundan nila si Jesus. And in a so short a time, Jesus was able to gain a lot of followers. He was able to gain a lot of disciples. He was able to convert, you know, lives that are, you know, thrush into something that is productive, just like his disciples, Peter, Paul, and uh, all of his disciples who followed him. So, ano pong sinasabi natin dito? That these religious leaders, meron pong silang mukha, meron po silang masasalamin sila na parang mga spiritual na mga leader pero sa totoo hindi po sila mga spiritual sapagkat sila po ay uh, hindi nakakagawa sa kalooban ng Panginoon okay, this Sanhedrin actually was threatened by the Lord Jesus Christ and so they planned to 
they actually planned to kill him. They actually planned to uh, put him into trial. Bakit po naalarma ang mga Sanhedrin na ito, itong mga religious leader na ito? Number one, Jesus is a threat to their authority. Number two, Jesus is a threat to their popularity. Amen? Bago dumating si Jesus, sila ang gustong-gusto ng mga tao. Sila ang binibisita ng mga tao. Sila ang niribigyan ng regalo ng mga tao. Sila ang pinapakinggan ng mga tao. Sila ang popular. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, ang tunay na anak ng Diyos at sugu ng Diyos, ang mga tao po ay uh, lumayo sa religiosity and fanaticism at sila po ay sumunod kay Jesus. At sila po ay nakinig sa turo ni Jesus. Which brings us to the third factor why this Sanhedrins and religious leaders in Jerusalem were threatened by the mere presence of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus was a threat to their laws and traditions. Dumating po si Jesus at binago po niya ang interpretation ng mga batas na ipinangaral ng mga religious leaders na ito. They were a threat to their laws and traditions. Case, uh, in fact, is that Jesus was reinterpreting the laws, just like the observance of the Sabbath. These religious readers were advocating Sabbath. You don't work at Sabbath. At ito po ay kanilang uh, ina-advocate. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, siya ay nagpapagaling sa Sabbath. Amen? And they were questioning that. Bakit hindi mo ginagawa ang mga batas ni Moses? Bakit hindi mo ginagawa ang mga batas sa Exodus? Bakit hindi mo ginagawa? Bakit? Bakit? Sapagkat ang sabi ni Jesus, ako ay dumating dito hindi para gawin ang batas, kundi para ito ay i-fulfill. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus came to fulfill this uh, laws that they have been practicing. He is the embodiment of the law. Amen? And so, this was a threat to these religious leaders. They could not, they could not give up on their tradition and on their laws, on dogmas and doctrines because Jesus Christ was just breaking them one by one. Amen? At uh, tingnan po natin yung ating mga religion, yung ating pong kinamulatan, yung ating pong mga tradisyon. Ito po ba ay naaayon sa salita ng Diyos? Kung hindi po ito naaayon sa salita ng Diyos, kinakailangan po natin itong isuko at iwanan. At huwag po tayong matakot sapagkat hindi po natin iiwanan ang tradisyon at ang batas, kundi susundin lang po natin ang utos ng ating Panginoon. Amen? So, that's it. Jesus Christ was a threat. To laws and tradition. Next, Jesus Christ was also a threat to the Romans that was Romans R O M A N C E to the Romans that was brewing between these religious leaders or the Sanhedrin and the political powers of Rome. Okay, merong po silang ugnayan, merong po silang uh, matatag na ugnayan na sila po ay uh, lahat sila, bawat isa sa kanila ay nagbe-benefit from each other to their own benefit, to their own advantage. But it does not necessarily mean that it benefits the people. Amen? Because the people were actually clamoring for change. That's why when Jesus came, He was a change maker. Siya po ay, uh, siya po ay uh, a radical person who changed a lot of things. And, and this is what the people wanted they they are tired of tradition they are tired of religion they are tired of dogmas they are tired of rituals and laws that are oppressive and so when jesus came he fulfilled the law at nawa po ganun po ang gawin natin yakapin po natin si jesus hindi po ang ating religion hindi po ang ating tradisyon hindi po ang ating kinamulatan hindi po ang ating kinagisnan. Sapagkat ang tradisyon, ang batas, ang lahat pong ito ay nagbabago. They change through time. Amen? These traditions, you know, they, 
they innovate them, they change them, they make them adaptive to the modern times, to the changing times. But there is only one thing that do not change and that is the scriptures, the word of God. Because the Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Kaya kung meron man tayong dapat niyayakap, tinatanggap sa ating mga puso't isipan, sa ating mga buhay, hindi po relihiyon, tradisyon at batas ang dapat nating tanggapin, kundi ang salita ng ating Panginoon. Ang ating Panginoon mismo ang ating tanggapin sa ating mga buhay, sa ating mga puso, sapagkat ang tradisyon nga po ay binali ng Diyos, binali ng Panginoong Heso Kristo nung siya po ay dumating dito sa lupa. At ito po ay kanyang tinupad. Amen? Ito po ay kanyang tinupad. So, because of these things that Jesus Christ, He was a change maker, He was a radical person who was advocating chains and reinterpreting the laws, reinterpreting what is society during that time, those who were affected, those who were threatened by it, conspired to accuse Him. Falsely, you know, they accused him of treason. They accused him of uh, of uh, sedition against the the Roman Empire. You know, sabi nila, he is declaring himself as a king. You know, when he when he went to Jerusalem on his triumphal entry, because people were saying, here comes the king. Amen. Pero ang ang ito po ay uh, sabi nila th- that is a false false claim sapagkat uh, that is a threat to the emperor of Rome kaya po siya po ay uh, dinala into mock trial and uh, they they actually succeeded in crucifying him so what is the root of all this jealousy and pride amen jealousy and pride dumating po ang jealousy sa puso ng mga religious leaders they could they are jealous of Jesus because more and more people are following him. They were jealous of Jesus because more and more people are listening to him. Because he was saying something that are relevant, something that is very helpful to their spirituality. They are, Jesus Christ was saying something that is changing them and touching them and revolutionizing their lives. Amen? Imagine people who are lame, and, uh, and death from birth, blind from birth. He was just healing them. He was just doing great and mighty things. Amen? Which, you know, prior to this, have, people have not seen such a thing. Wala pong nakakita ng mga bagay na ito, mga bulag ay nakakakita. Ang mga pilay ay tumatalon at naglalakad. Ang mga bingi ay nakakarinig. Ang mga inaalihan ng masasamang espiritu ay lumalaya. Wala pong nangyaring ganito bago dumating ang Panginoon. Pero nung dumating si Jesus, nakita nilang lahat. This is different. This is not religion. This is not tradition. This is not law. This is life. This is life changing. And that is what they wanted. And so they followed Jesus. But those who were affected are not happy. Hindi po ba't ganun din sa atin ngayon? Sa ating pong uh, lipunan, kapag merong isang gumagawa ng mabuti at tama, sa halip po na matuwa tayo sapagkat sila'y tumutulong at gumagawa ng mabuti at tama, tayo po ay naiinggit. At tayo po ay pinapatay natin yung ginagawa nila. Hindi natin sila hinahayaang gawin para sa ikabubuti ng sambayanan. Sa halip po na suportahan po natin ay uh, ating pong kinikritisize bakit ka nagkakaroon ng sarili mong uh, uh, pagtulong? Bakit ka du- nagkaka- nagkakaroon ng uh, sarili mong uh, gift giving? Bakit ka nagkakaroon ng sarili mong uh, donation drive? Minamasama po natin. Why? Because we are full of jealousy and pride. Instead of being happy for others because they are doing what is good and beneficial for the good of many, we are not happy. Because we are insecure, we are jealous, we are full of pride. And if there is something that is lacking, very much lacking in our society, that is 
humility, which is the opposite of pride. Amen? Humility, which is the opposite of jealousy. But Jesus Christ came to show the perfect example of humility. But the Sanhedrins and the religious leaders were angry and mad because they were jealous and full of pride. At sa panahon po natin ngayon, ang mga religious leaders ng mga relihiyon ay nililiglig ng Panginoon. The Lord is just exposing religious, quote-unquote, religious people because the Lord wants us, you know, to follow the scriptures, what is written in the scriptures, just like in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ when He came here 2,000 years ago. Amen? So, the religious leaders, we were talking about them. They were cursed by the Lord Jesus Christ and they are symbolic of the fig tree. Now, I want to extend that, you know. I would like to believe that the Lord did not only mean that the fig tree is symbolic of the religious leaders who are spiritually dead. They have the facade of being spiritual, but inside they are spiritually dead. Sabi nga doon sa Bible, eh, para silang uh, mga nitso na pininturahan, maganda sa labas, pero sa loob ay puro kalansay, puro mga buto, amen? at uh, hindi maganda. Malab maganda lang sa panlabas. Pero sa loob ay hindi maayos at maganda. Maganda. So, I believe that this symbolism of the fig tree extend to even the believers like us. Amen? Tayo pong mga mananampalataya. Sapagkat naniniwala po ako na kahit tayo po ay mga naturingang mananampalataya kung tayo po hindi namumunga. If we are not bearing fruit, just like Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen? The Lord expects us to bear fruit of the Spirit. Ang Panginoon po ay uh, nag umaasa na tayo po, nakapag tayo po naging mga Kristiyano, tayo po naging mga mananampalataya, tayo po ay mamumunga ng bunga ng Espiritu. Kaya ako po ay naniniwala na kung tayo po ay mga naturing ang Kristiyano at hindi po tayo namumunga ng pag-ibig, Wala po tayong pag-ibig sa ating puso, kundi puro galit, sama ng loob, hinanakit. Sa halip po na pag-ibig ay uh, puro po uh, kapaitan ang nasa ating mga puso at uh, galit. Kung wala po tayong joy, love and joy, joy which is kagalakan, amen? Kung, kung sa halip po na kagalakan ay, ay puro po... Uh, wallowing and uh, complaining and grumbling and uh, and uh, sadness ang nakikita sa atin but there is always reason to be joyful because the Lord is a, a God of joy amen siya po ay uh, siya po ay uh, kagalakan sabi po doon na uh, uh, the third fruit of the spirit love joy and peace kapayapaan Amen? So, sa halip po na kapayapaan ang nakikita sa atin ay anxiety, too much worry. Tayo po ay sa halip na mabuhay sa kapayapaan, ano man ang nagaganap sa mundo natin, ang nais po ng Panginoon, tayo po ay uh, manatiling kalmado at payapa sa piling ng Diyos. That the Lord is in control. And so, we have all the reason in the world to experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Because the Bible says, Be ye not anxious about anything, but in supplication, in prayer, let all request, let all your requests be known unto God. And then, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and mind. Amen? But why do we not experience peace? Because we let ourselves be overwhelmed 
with anxiety and worry. So, hindi po tayo namumunga magkagayon. Ang ikaapat po na fruit of the Spirit is patience. Amen? Patience. Amen? Pagiging uh, pasensyoso. Amen? Hindi po, which is the opposite of pagiging irritable. Pagiging uh, madaling mainis, madaling magalit. Hindi ka, wala kang pasensya. Konting bagay, konting kibot, lagi kang uh, nakaalma, lagi kang galit. Lagi kang uh, parang pinagsakluban ng daigdig. You're always angry. You're such a madman. And so, patience is not being seen in you. Wala kang pasensya. Konting kibot ay uh, hindi ka makapaghintay. Amen? So, patience. Number five, fruit of the Spirit, kindness. Amen? Kabutihan ng loob. Amen? Sa buhay po natin ngayon, ito po ang kinakailangan maipakita natin. Kindness because the world is such in turmoil and hatred reigns in this world. There is the Asian hate. Asian hate naman ngayon. Pagkatapos ng uh, Black Lives Matter, mga Asians naman ang tinatarget ng hatred ng mga tao. And they are harming people, killing people for no reason at all. Why? Because people lack kindness. Instead of kindness, it is hatred that is in the heart of man. That's why, because they are not kind, they have no kindness in their hearts, they hurt people, they malign people, they discriminate people, amen? Because of color, because of uh, race, because of nationality, because you know they are because they are Asians or they are blacks or they are something else aside from them so th that is not kindness the world needs more kindness and if we in our own little way show this kindness then in our own little way we are doing our part you know to change this world and so we need some kindness so if you are a Christian and you don't have kindness in your heart, that means you are not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Number six, fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 to 23 is goodness. Amen? So it is a relative of kindness as well. You know, being good to others. Amen? Instead of being, uh, being rude to others. Amen? It is so easy for us to be rude. Napakadali po sa atin ang maging rude sa kapwa natin. Instead of appreciating people, instead of being positive for people around us, we always see the negative in them. We always magnify and glorify the negative traits of the people around us. But if you have goodness in your heart, you overcome and you, ov you go beyond seeing the weaknesses of the people around you. And you go beyond that and see the goodness in them. Amen? This person is not perfect. Marami siyang pagkukulang. Kulang sa pinag-aralan eh. Kulang sa kaalaman. Pero tingnan mo naman. Walang tigil kung magtrabaho yan. Araw at gabi at tapat. Hindi nang iiwan. So why don't you show a little bit of goodness and kindness and stop being rude? The world needs more good people and kind people and patient people. People who love peace and joy and people who have love in their hearts for their fellow men. The world is such, in such turmoil. The Bible says in the last days we will live in perilous times and I believe that we are living in these perilous times when you're an Asian and just walking into the grocery and someone would just punch you in your face and, and strangle you and attempt to kill you while some other people are just bystanders looking by doing nothing. We live in such dangerous and perilous times the Bible has prophesied. And so we need a little more of kindness a little more of goodness. 
And only the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit can give us that. Next, number seven fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Katapatan. Ang marami pong tao, ito po ang weakness sapagkat napakadaling magtaksil at hindi maging tapa. Amen? So, wag na po tayong lumayo sa ating mga tahanan. Gaano po tayo katapat sa ating mga asawa? Gaano po tayo katapat sa ating pamilya? Gaano po tayo katapat sa ating mga business partners? Gaano po tayo katapat sa bayan kung tayo po ay mga nasa panunungkulan? How faithful are we? But now, faithfulness is just, you know, almost a thing of the, of the past because it is so easy for people to be unfaithful. Unfaithful to their vows to their marriage, unfaithful to their, uh, to their uh, partners, unfaithful to their families, unfaithful sa kanilang sinumpaang tungkulin. But the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Number eight fruit of the Spirit, gentleness. Amen? Pagiging gentle, which is the opposite of being rude. Amen? So, napakadali po ngayon ang maging rude. Sa dami po ng mga circumstances sa buhay natin, there are so many circumstances that could easily lead us to be rude in our behavior, in our manners. But it is not what the Holy Spirit wants us to do or to show. But the Holy Spirit wants us to show gentleness. You know? And we don't have to go far. We have to start right in our homes. Be gentle. And being gentle means, you know, you show a little bit of respect. Amen? Maging, pag, ang pagiging gentle po or mahinahon. Amen? Sa halip na lagi kang galit, lagi kang nakasinghal, lagi kang, uh, kala mo lagi kang may kaaway. Sabi po doon sa Galatians 5, 22-23, gentleness. Amen? Maging mahinahon. At hindi ka po magiging mahinahon kung hindi ka puno ng Holy Spirit. You should be filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to be gentle. To show gentleness. Amen? Sapagkat maraming mga triggers around us. There are so many triggers around us that will help us fall into rudeness instead of gentleness. And so, you need the fruit of the Spirit to be able to manifest that, to be able to show that. And the last one is self-control. The last fruit of the Spirit, as mentioned in Galatians 5:22 to 23, is self-control. So, kung titingnan po natin, halos magkakamag-anak po itong mga characters na ito, itong mga qualities na ito, itong mga fruits na ito. But self-control is something that you cannot do on your own. You need the help of God. You need the help of the Spirit to be able to control your urge, your, your passion for the world, to be able to control your, your, your urge for sexual, committing sexual immorality, committing alcoholism and nicotine and drug addiction. In order for you to be able to have that kind of self-control, you need the help of the Spirit. Amen? Kinakailangan kontrolin mo yung sarili mo na huwag ka nang makipanagpo o makipagkita sa kabit mo o sa, sa lalaki o sa babae na hindi mo naman dapat kinakatagpo sapagat hindi mo naman asawa. Amen? But people lack self-control because they love themselves more than they love the Holy Spirit in their lives. So instead of subjecting themselves to the Holy Spirit, they allow themselves to be controlled by the flesh, and so they go on committing sin, sins of immorality, sins of addiction, and, and sins, of, uh, sins that are abominable in the sight of God. Self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. So, the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree because it was not bearing fruit. How about you? How are you, child of God? How are you, believer of God? Kumusta ka, Kristiyano? Ikaw ba ay namumunga 
ng bunga ng banal na spirito? Or have you strayed away? Have you fallen away? Have you dried up that you are no more, no longer bearing fruit? No longer bearing fruit of the Spirit. You don't bear the fruit of the Spirit because you have abandoned the Spirit of God in your life. You have grieved the Holy Spirit in your life. Gumawa ka ng kasalanan at hindi ka nagrepent ng iyong kasalanan. Ang Holy Spirit po ay grieve mo. And if you grieve the Holy Spirit, who will convict you of sin? Who will convict you and help you? Amen? To, to be restored. So, kinakailangan po natin ma-restore ang ating relationship sa Panginoon. Ma-restore po yung ating relationship sa Holy Spirit. At magkakaroon lamang po yan ng katuparan kung tayo po ay magpapakumbaba at hihingi ng tawad sa ating mga kasalanan. Repentance is the key. Humble yourself. Repent. Admit that you have fallen away from the grace of God and you have not borne the fruit of the Spirit. You are like the fig tree that is no longer bearing fruit and so it is good for nothing. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ do? He cursed it. Judgment will fall upon those who do not bear fruit. Judgment will, flow, will fall upon those who do not bear the fruits of the Spirit. Because this is a reflection of God in our lives. And if so, do in so doing, kapag hindi po natin ito pinapakita sa buhay natin, what good are we? Amen? We are good for nothing. Kaya po kinakailangan, ito po ay makita sa atin. So, this was what happened on the Monday that the Lord uh, was walking along the way and He saw the fig tree. Pangalawa pong nangyaring significant on a Holy Monday is when Jesus Christ arrived at the temple and He found the courts, the temple courts, full of corrupt people, corrupt money changers. Yung pong templo ng Panginoon na supposedly a house of prayer, a house of hospitality, spirituality, a house where only the things of the Spirit are done, e ginawa po nilang kalakalan. Marami po doon mga money changers na nag, nag, sila po ay nag-business. They are doing business in the house of God. And this offended Jesus. This offended the Lord that He began overturning the tables. He began clearing the temple saying, the scriptures declare, my temple will be a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a den of thieves. Galit po ang Diyos sa mga taong kinakalakal ang salita ng Diyos. Galit po ang Diyos sa mga taong ginagawang bahay ng, ng, ng sugal, bahay ng, uh, ng uh, pagmamahal sa pera, ang ang tahanan ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang tahanan ng Diyos, sabi po ng Luke 19.46, should be a house of prayer. It should be a house of prayer. And so on this Monday evening, I think the most significant thing and event that the Lord did was to clear the temple and making it a house of prayer. He hated the money changers. He rebuked them. He overturned their tables and He cleared the temple of all these mga magnanakaw, of all these people who love money more than their spirits. At ang Panginoon po ay uh, nagtagumpay. Amen? Kaya tinan mo ang iglesia mo. Ang iglesia mo ba ay iglesia pa rin ng pananalangin o iglesia na ng negosyo? Sapagat lahat kayo ay membro na ng networking. At mas busy kayo na nag-networking kaysa sa gumagawa sa kalooban ng Diyos. Mas busy kayo na nag-negosyo sa inyong iglesia, masyado kayong busy na nagpapalago ng inyong network sa halip na kayo ay nag evangelize o nananalangin. My house will be called a house of prayer. Luke 1946. So yan po ang nangyari. Yan po ang nangyari sa Monday, Holy Monday. So, not 
not one of those uh, people who were changing money, the money changers, they were all washed out, wiped away ng ating Panginoon. So, on the day three, ano po ang nangyari sa day three? So, Sunday, Palm Wednesday, Monday, Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree, and Jesus Christ overturned all the money changers in the temple and cleared it and made it a house of prayer as it is supposed to be. On day three, which is a Tuesday, Holy Tuesday, we are talking about Holy Week. Amen? So, pag sinabi mong Holy Week, kinakailangan pitong araw yan. So, nagsimula po tayo sa linggo, anong ginawa ng Panginoon? Lunes, anong ginawa ng Panginoon? At ngayon ay Martes. Ano po ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa araw ng Martes? On a Tuesday, Jesus Christ retreated and went to the Mount of Olives. When we went to Israel, the Mount of Olives is uh, in front of the gate of Jerusalem. So it is overseeing Jerusalem. So if you go to the Mount of Olives, you are overseeing Jerusalem. And on that Tuesday morning, Jesus Christ and His disciples returned to Jerusalem and He passed by another withered fig tree and Jesus spoke about the importance of faith because back at the temple, the religious leaders were already upset because Jesus Christ was establishing himself as a spiritual authority that they are threatened. So they organized an ambush to, to place him under arrest. But Jesus Christ was able to evade their arrest because Jesus Christ retreated and went to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus Christ did not mince words. Siya po ay nangaral, nangaral, nangaral because He knows that His time is near. He made use of His time. He redeemed His time. Kanya po nga, wala po siyang sinayang na oras. Doon pa sa Mount Olives, ay patuloy po siyang nagbigay ng mga mensahe. Patuloy po siyang nangaral ng nangaral sa mga tao sapagkat alam niyang malapit na po siyang umalis. Sa Matthew 23, 24 to 23, sabi po niyang Panginoon, Blind guys! Blind guys, for you are like whitewashed tombs. You are beautiful on the outside, but you are filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Snakes, sons of vipers, How will you escape the judgment of hell? Galit na po ang Panginoon. Galit po ang Panginoon sa hypocrisy. Galit po ang Panginoon sa outward religiosity, but inside and inward, you are like dead people's bones. You are poor of impurity. You are so ugly inside. Although, just like a tube, you are so nice and neat outside, but inside, You are hypocrites and lawless and your snakes and vipers. Jesus Christ did not mince words when it comes to judgment. Jesus Christ did not hold back when it comes to judgment. And Jesus Christ was dealing with these religious people. In our time and age today, we still can see this happening. We can see people pretending to be religious, pretending to be leaders of their denominations and their organizations, pretending to be religious, but deep inside, full of hypocrisy because they do not do what the scripture says, what the will of God says. They do not obey the word of God. Amen? They love their dogmas more than the scriptures. They love their traditions more than the scriptures. They love their laws, their popularity, their connection more than the scriptures. And so they continue to be hypocrites. And at this time, on a Tuesday night, on a Tuesday, hindi po ito pinalagpas ng Panginoon. Amen? He talked about them in the Mount of Olives. He sat there overlooking Jerusalem and he was saying and saying about the religious people. Amen? This is called the, also the Olivet Discourse. Sa Matthew 24, ito po yung uh, discourse ng ating Panginoon sa Matthew 24 to 
yung pong mga uh, sinabi ng Panginoon habang siya po ay nasa Mount of Olives. What is in Matthew 24? Amen? Sa Matthew 24, Jesus Christ was answering a question, a legit question that was given by one of his disciples. May I read from Matthew 24 verse 1? This was happening in the Mount of Olives on a Tuesday of a Holy Week. Jesus left the temple and he was walking away when his disciples came up to him and called his attention to the buildings. There were so many beautiful buildings in Jerusalem at that time. And the, the, word, the Lord says, Do you see all these things? He asked, I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives and the disciples came to him and said, Tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of the coming of your age? At the end of the age, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and he will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of wars, but see that you are not alarmed because such things must happen and the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places, but all of these are just the beginning of birth pangs. And then you will be persecuted, you will be put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith. They will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear. And they will deceive many people. And because of this, the increase of wickedness will come. And the love of the most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. On a Tuesday of the Holy Week, Jesus Christ on the Mount of Olives overseeing Jerusalem was talking about the end of the world, the end of days. He was talking about what is going to happen in the end times, he was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. He said, can you see these buildings? Not one stone here will be left one on, one on top of the other because everyone will be thrown down. He was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, which happened in 70 AD when a weird and, and a crazy emperor raised down. Jerusalem and its temple to the ground. They have raised it to the ground. That's why mm, the prophecy was fulfilled. Jesus Christ's words were, was fulfilled that not one stone will be on top of the other. All of the foundations have gone crumbling down. And indeed, yes, Jerusalem was destroyed. And until now, Jerusalem is a broken city. Jerusalem is a destroyed city. And it will take the events of the last days that the temple in Jerusalem will be restored so that the temple worship will be reinstalled. At ito po ay magaganap pagdating po ng Great Tribulation. Jesus Christ was talking about the signs of the times. Amen? Sabi po doon, many false prophets will come. Jesus said, "No, watch out that no one deceives you. Ang dami pong nangangaral ngayon. Ang dami pong nagsasabi ngayon na sila ay totoo at tama. Pero mga nagmumura. Ang dami pong nagsasabing sila ay tagapangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Pero ang kanila pong ipinapangaral ay mga uh, out of context na mga scriptures. Pero marami bumibilib sa kanila at nakikinig sa kanila at sumusunod sa kanila because they are deceived. But this is just one of the signs of the times that many false prophets and false teachers will come. But watch out that no one deceives you because mga ngalat po sila in the last days. 
There will be wars and rumors of wars, as we have heard. Amen. Kingdom against kingdom, nation against kingdom. Aren't we seeing it now happening? There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Aren't this happening now? And these are just the beginning of birth pangs. And one of the signs of the times is that persecution will increase. Many people will hate you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Many people will belittle you, will malign you, will discriminate you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And that's part of it, persecution. Sabi pa po doon, the love of many will grow cold because of this increase in wickedness. Amen? These are the perilous times. This is the increase of wickedness that we are seeing. Amen? There's so much hatred in the hearts of men. There is so much hatred in the heart of people that they discriminate, they kill randomly and, and uh, just spontaneously. Napakadali po ang pumatay because... The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 12, there is an increase of wickedness. And because of this increase of wickedness around us, the love of many will grow cold. Amen? You, Christian, watch out. Guard your heart. Guard your faith. Because you might be one of those whose love will grow cold. I pray not that until the end, you will be faithful to your calling, faithful to your faith, and faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because indeed, one of the signs of the times is backsliding. Many people will grow cold in their faith. Marami po ang tatalikod sa pananampalataya. Marami po ang tatalikod sa paglilingkod. Marami po ang tatalikod sa pag-ibig at pagmamahal sa Diyos. At yan po ang isa sa mga sinyales at tanda ng huling kapanahunan. Maraming manlalamig. Maraming magbabackslide. At dalangin ko, hindi ka makasama doon. Magkos ikaw ang isa sa mga magiging tapat hanggang wakas na magmamahal sa Panginoon. And then, the last of the last of the signs of the times is that the gospel will be preached into all the world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come. This is the preaching of the gospel. This is one of the sign of the times. We are more as aggressive as before. We are more as advanced as before in propagating the gospel because the signs of the times is that it says the, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world. Isn't that happening now? The propagation of the gospel is easier because of technology. Praise God for technology because we are reaching. The reach is greater than before. I am here alone but I have an audience that is worldwide. And that is a fulfillment of Matthew 24, 14. Amen. That the gospel of the kingdom will be advanced, will be preached. At nangyayari na nga po ito ngayon. And then, watch out, because when everyone is rich into this world, and that is what is happening now because of the blessing of technology, it is easier to reach people, it is easier to advance the gospel, the end will come. The end will come. And so you are hearing this message right now to warn you so that when the end will come, it will not be a surprise to you. But you will say, I have heard this message before. And if you have heard this message before, what is asked of you is to accept it, to receive it in your heart. Amen? And Holy Week like this is the perfect time for us to come to that realization. Amen? That there is more to life than making money. There is more to life than traveling. There is more to life than being in a high position of power and wealth. There is more to life than being the wealthiest person. Because you could be the wealthiest person, but when you are struck with, with a sickness or disease, your wealth cannot do anything to save you. And I have heard some testimonies of wealthy people. They have all the money in the world, but their money could not do anything to save their kids from cancer or from an incurable disease. 
their wealth and money could not do anything to put them in a hospital where all the hospital beds are full and occupied and so they are relegated to the tent waiting for their time to be admitted. At yung iba po, ikinamatay na lang ang paghihintay sa tent sapagkat lahat po ng hospital ay puno na at wala na pong lugar ang mga pasyente. Na kahit na ikaw ay mayaman o mahirap, it does not respect you. Sickness and disease does not respect you. What am I saying? That there's more to life than everything that you are doing and experiencing and enjoying in this world. And that is, it comes down to your spirituality. It comes down to your, your, to your purpose. At yun po yung sinasabi natin na ang Panginoong Jesus ay bumaba dito sa lupa para mamatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, tubusin tayo sa ating mga kasalanan, tubusin tayo sa ating mga buhay. At kung ating pong tatanggapin yun, makikita po natin na tayo po ay magkakaroon ng kaligtasan. At ito po ang nais ng Panginoon na sabihin, on a Tuesday of the Holy Week, He was giving His Olivet Discourse. He was saying about the destruction of Jerusalem. He was telling about the signs of the times and the end of the age. He says, the end will come when the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world. And we are doing that right now. More and more, we are more aggressive and we are advancing the kingdom of God. We are preaching the gospel because the, the end of the age will come. Amen? So the Lord is just, you know, speaking about His second coming in Matthew 24 on a Tuesday night, on a Tuesday in the Mount of Olives. Amen? Now, on a day four, which is a Holy Wednesday, ito po yung Holy Wednesday, wala pong record ang Bible on what happened on a Wednesday. The Bible doesn't say anything about what the Lord did on a Wednesday. The Bible recorded what the Lord did on a Sunday, on a Holy Monday, and on a Holy Tuesday. But it did not record anything about a Holy Wednesday. So, let's skip that and go to a Holy Thursday, which is now. Today is Monday Thursday. Today is Holy Thursday. What happened on a Holy Thursday? There are three important events or significant things that happened on a Monday Thursday. Like now, the Passover, the Last Supper, and the washing of the disciples' feet. So, first of all, why is it called a Monday Thursday? Monday comes from the Anglo-French word mandatum. Mandatum means commandment. It refers to when Jesus in the upper room during the Last Supper gave the command, the mandatum to his disciples. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Ito po yung huling uh, uh, pananalita ni Jesus Christ sa kanyang mga alagad bago po siya ipako sa krus, bago niya po iwanan ng mga alagad, bago po siya namatay at inilibing at nabuhay mula sa mga patay. The commandment was given in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, love one another. Love one another. So ito rin po ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. On a Monday, Thursday, we I hope and pray that we will love one another more. If you love somebody, you love him for who he is, not because for what he is, for what he has, for what he has achieved. You, are, you love him for who he is. Mamahalin mo siya sapagkat siya ay siya. Hindi dahil sa mga narating niya, nagawa niya, o na-achieve na niya. Hindi po yun ang basihan ng pag-ibig. Kaya po sinabi ng Panginoon bago po siya umakyat ng langit sa kanyang mga lagad, iniwanan niya po ang mga kataga at ang commandment, ang mandatum. That's why it's called the Monday Thursday. Love one another. And I pray we will love one another more. 
Loving another person means forgiving that person. Loving another person means understanding and accepting the weaknesses of that person. Because nobody is perfect for now. Wala pong perfecto. Kaya po ang pag-ibig na hinihingi ng Diyos sa atin ay yung pag-ibig na tatanggapin at yayakapin ang iyong kapwa sa kabila ng kanyang mga kahinaan, sa kabila ng kanyang mga kakulangan, despite the shortcomings, despite the weaknesses. If your husband has shortcomings and weaknesses that you can grasp and comprehend and accept, why not do that? Likewise, if your wife has some misgivings, if your wife has some shortcomings, siya po ay may pagkukulang at nais po ng Panginoon na, you know, you look beyond that weakness, you look beyond those shortcomings and love him or love her despite. Amen? This is the kind of love that the Lord wants us to have. And this is the love that he gave his disciples. Amen. This is the love that he gave. This is the kind of command that he gave his disciples. That for his disciples to love one another. And we, we are disciples of Christ. We are disciples of the Lord. And we are expected to love our fellow disciples. We are expected to love our fellow men. We are expected to love one another. And that it is that kind of love that looks beyond shortcomings and weaknesses and failures. It is that kind of love that looks beyond the despite of everything. Amen? So, that is Monday Thursday. Now, as I said, there are three most important events on a Holy Thursday, and that is the Passover. At this point in time, what is happening is that it is also the feast of the Passover that the Jews are celebrating. And so Jesus Christ sent his disciples to reserve the upper room so that they can have their last supper in there. So what is the significance of the Passover? The Passover is a festival or a celebra celebration that has been commanded by the Lord in Exodus verse, uh, chapter 12 to celebrate so that they will celebrate how God has delivered them from slavery in Egypt. In Exodus 12, the last of the tenth plague, okay? The tenth plague is for God to judge the firstborn of the Egyptians. The plague of death that will kill all the firstborn of the Egyptians. In order for the Israelites to be saved from this plague, God commanded all the Israelites to kill a lamb. A lamb whose blood will be shed and it will be, post, it will be uh, put down on the lintels and doorposts of their houses. Yung pong kanilang mga pintuan ay kanila pong uh, papahiran ng dugo ng kanilang uh, lamb, Paschal lamb na papatayin. At yun po ang magiging marka na kung saan the, 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 the plague of death will pass over the household of the Israelite people and save their firstborn. And the Israelites indeed followed the command of God and then came the destroyer entering the homes. And this destroyer has killed all the firstborn of Egypt, including the firstborn of Pharaoh. He was not saved. He was not exempted from it. But, praise God, because of the blood of the lamb that was on the doorpost and lintels of their houses, the firstborn of the Israelites were saved. And they were passed over by the destroyer, by the plague of death. And so, they were saved. In Exodus 12, 21 to 29, it was recorded, There was a loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. 
every firstborn of each Egyptian household was dead and there was loud wailing. Judgment has come upon the Egyptians and upon the king's heart, upon the Pharaoh's heart. And so finally, he released the Israelites from their slavery and they were set free. To this day, that great act of God saving the Israelites from the plague of death is celebrated by the Jews. Amen. Wherever they are, they celebrate the Passover. And at this point in time, on a Thursday, on a Monday Thursday, it was time for the Passover. And Jesus Christ was celebrating the Passover with his disciples with a last supper. Amen. But before that, fast forward to the New Testament. The Passover lamb is a type of Jesus Christ. No longer do we need to kill an animal to put it on our doorpost and lintels. The blood of the lamb who is the Lord Jesus Christ, whom uh, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Jesus, uh, John the Baptist acknowledged that Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The prophecy and the typology was fulfilled when Jesus Christ came as the sacrificial lamb who gave his life, who shed his blood on the cross so that we will be saved, so that we will not die of plagues and judgment, so that we will be saved. At si Jesus po ang naging katuparan. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. He fulfilled the law including the symbolism of the Passover, Matthew 5.17, 1 Corinthians 5.7, Revelation 5.12. Jesus Christ was killed during the Passover time on the Last Supper when he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. He was handed to the Sanhedrin and he was tried on a mock court and he was crucified and he died on the cross. So today, as I said, we do not have to kill lambs and put their blood in ourselves. But by the Spirit, spiritually, we can apply the blood of Jesus in our lives and we could trust Him to save us from death, to save us from harm, to save us from perdition, going to hell. Yun po ang katotohanan at yun po yung kaganapan ng mga pangyayaring ito. On a Monday Thursday, Jesus Christ was letting His disciples know this truth. And we should know this truth. That there is no amount of blood, there is no amount of sacrifice, tradition, or religion that can save us from perdition and harm and hell but it is only the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross that can save us from our eternal perdition from our eternal punishment the Israelites put their faith in the blood of the lamb that was posted on their doorpost and lintels and it saved them likewise in our time we can trust the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us, to wash us, to save us from our sins. Not our works, not our religions, not our laws, not our traditions can save us. Not even our religiosity, not even our sincerity. But it is only the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ, which was unselfishly shed on the cross, that can save us from our sins. At yun po ang kinakailangan nating ma-realize, celebrating the Holy Week like this is useless and nothing if we don't realize the significance of what the Lord done, has done on the cross. Amen? The, Jesus Christ shared the feast of the Passover with His disciples, saying, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now, that I will not eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Luke 22, 15 to 16. Jesus Christ was so excited to eat the last Passover meal with them. 
sapagkat sa hindi na raw po niya magagawa iyon hanggang matupad. Amen? Ma-fulfill po yung typology na yon ng Passover because Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb. He is the one that will be sacrificed on the cross. It is, blo- it is His blood that will be shed on the cross so that salvation will come upon all the world. Amen? So as the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ was about to fulfill the meaning of Passover. And that is, His body was broken on the cross. His blood was shed as a sacrifice for us to be free from sin and death. Passover. The second significant event of Monday Thursday, which is now Monday Thursday, is the Last Supper. It is also what we call the last meal that Jesus ate with his disciples before the betrayal of Judas Iscariot and his arrest and his handling down to the Sanhedrin. Okay, it is recorded in the Synoptic Gospels. But as I said, it was more than just the last meal of Jesus. It was more than just the last supper of Jesus because in Luke 22:19, sabi po doon, and he took bread, he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, "This is my body given for you." Do this in remembrance of me. Now, marami rin pong mga relihiyon ay ginagawa ito. In fact, they, they do this every Sunday on their masses. They take a bread and then they recite this. They took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. But they went beyond that. Because sa Luke 22:17 to 20, ito po yung sinasabi ng scripture sa After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, "Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes." And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body given for you. Do it in remembrance of me." In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup the new, of the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Many people take this as their basis for the doctrine of transubstantiation. Ang mga relihiyon po ay they went beyond and over what the scripture is telling. Amen. They they took it literally. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, take this bread and break it and eat it because if you if you eat it you are eating my body take this cup of wine and drink it because if you drink it you are drinking my blood and so they took it literally and said when they do in the eucharist when they eat the bread and when they take the wine the bread becomes the blood of Christ uh, the bread becomes the body of Christ and the blood becomes the The wine becomes the blood of Christ, of Christ, as if there is some kind of magical transubstantiation. There is some kind of magical uh, changing of the substance. Nagiging literal daw po na katawan ni Kristo na kinakain ng tao. Nagiging literal na dugo ni Kristo na iniinom ng tao. Nagiging literal na katawan ni Kristo. That is bordering the occult. That is bordering uh, an occultic teaching. Why? Because there is some kind of magic going on. There is some kind of a uh, mysterious transubstantiation going on. Some kind of uh, cannibalism and, and and some kind of uh, of occultism. Sa pagkat hindi po totoong nagiging literal na nagiging katawan ni Kristo ang mga mm, bread na ito at ang at ang juice na ito. Ito po ay san sinabi ng Panginoon, do this just in remembrance of me. Bilang pag-alala sa ginawa ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. It is like when Jesus Christ said to the 5,000 after He fed them, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Si Jesus ba tinapay? But He said, I am the bread of life. He said, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But Jesus did not become, you know, some kind of uh, magical uh, bread. He did not become like that. 
So there are some scriptures in the Bible that you do not take it literally, but you understand it symbolically. Just like when Jesus said, I am the door. Siya raw po ay pintuan. Si Jesus ba ay pintuan? I am the vine and you are the branches. Si Jesus po ba ay grapes? Is he a vine? No, he is not. Because he is talking in symbolism. He is talking in symbolism. Likewise, the elements of the bread and the elements of the wine are symbolism. Ito po ay simbolismo ng katawan ni Kristo na bayubay sa krus ng Kalbaryo at ang wine ay simbolismo ng kanyang dugo na nabuhos sa krus ng Kalbaryo. At ang sinasabi po niya, gawin niyo ito bilang pag-alala sa akin. Do this in remembrance of me. So, the transubstantiation doctrine should be debunked. Because it has nothing to do with the truth of the scriptures. It is bordering on occultism and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and magic and wizardry. Because there is no such thing that occurs. Hindi po nagiging literal na katawan ni Kristo. Sapagkat kung magkagayon, tayo po ay mga kanibal na kumakain ng katawan ni Kristo. Tayo po ay uh, uh, mga kanibal na umiinom ng dugo ni Kristo. But that is so far from the truth. Amen? Because ang, ang Panginoon po, ang, ang sinasabi po niya dito, the last supper was commanded for us to commemorate, to remember that we do not forget what was done on the cross. That Jesus Christ gave His life. His body was bruised. Amen? Siya po ay uh, binugbog. Siya po ay uh, nabayubay sa krus para po sa ating kagalingan, para po sa ating himala, para po sa ating kaligtasan. And the Lord's Supper is one of the two ordinances that was given to the church. Only two ordinances. The Last Supper, which is also what we call the communion, which we do in churches, and the water baptism. So, lahat po ng iba pang mga ritual, sakramento, ay wala pong biblical basis. Because there are only two ordinances that was stated in the scriptures for us to do as children of God, as ordinances of the church. Water baptism and the Last Supper. Which is also reiterated in 1 Corinthians 11, 23-33. So, The Bible teaches us this truth that we may know them and accept them. Now, it might be difficult for us to accept it right now because we have been raised in catechism. We have been raised in our religion and dogmas. We have been raised with our uh, beliefs in our religions, in our so-called churches. But I am sorry to offend you. I am sorry to tell you this truth because you have to know the truth. Because it is the truth that will set you free. The Bible says in Matthew 5.17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Amen? Jesus Christ fulfilled all the law. And so what comes out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ should be the ones that we should be clinging on to. Not tradition, not laws, because in fact, Jesus Christ rebuked the Sanhedrin and the religious leaders of Jerusalem because they were offended by the Lord. He reinterpreted the law. He reinterpreted what was, what was the gospel, what was the scriptures. And... Uh, It offended the religious leaders. And I'm sorry if I am op offending you right now. Because I'm talking about transubstantiation. Because I'm talking about, about dogmas and religions. About traditions that we have come to, you know, niyakap natin ng napakatagal na panahon. Pero hindi pa huhuli ang lahat sapagkat ang Panginoon po, tayo po'y minumulat sa katotohanan. At nawa po'y yakapin natin ang mga katotohanan ito. At ang pinakahuli sa tatlong mahalagang kaganapan na naganap on a Monday Thursday of the Holy Week is the washing of the disciples' feet. At that time, when the upper room was reserved and the Last Supper was to be conducted on the upper room, 
That evening after sunset, Jesus Christ washed the feet of his disciples as they prepared for the Passover. And during that time, I have thought about this in the past, Peter said, no, you should never wash my feet. Because you, before you enter the upper room, everybody washes their feet. Yun po ang tradition nila, is their culture. Why? Because the feet is a symbol of, of all the dirt that we accumulate. Ang, ang ating pong mga paa ay lagalag, saan-saan po tayo nagpupunta. At sa ating pong paglalagalag, paglalakbay, marami po tayong nakukuhang mga dumi. Marami po tayong nakukuhang mga hindi karapat-dapat, mga foreign elements. And so they need to be cleansed. They need to be clean. And in so doing, before entering the upper room, they need to be clean. But nobody can do it because the disciples forgot. Na, 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 nakalimutan po nila. It was an oversight. Nakalimutan nilang mag-hire ng tagahugas ng paa. At among the disciples, nobody volunteered to wash the feet. Nobody volunteered that, you know, I'll be the one to wash the feet because nobody does it. Nobody can do it. Walang available. Alam niyo po ang ginawa ni Jesus Christ? Tinanggal niya po yung kanyang damit at kanya pong nilagay yung kanyang balabal na tuwalya at siya pong umupo at ang sabi niya, pumila kayo ako maghuhugas ng inyong mga paa. Jesus Christ washed the disciples' feet that Peter said in John 13, 8-9, No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. You are my Lord. You are my Master. Hindi bagay sa iyo, Lord, ang tagahugas ng paa. But Jesus answered, Unless, Peter, I wash you, you have no part with me. And then the Lord, Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but also my hands and my head as well, and everything within me. Amen. What is this saying to us? Number one, that feet is a symbol of our sins. Feet accumulate all the dirt in this world. Wherever we go, we accumulate the feet, uh, the dirt in our feet. And so it is a symbol of our dirt, of our sin, that needs to be washed. Before we go and, re and uh, go to bed at night, we always wash our feet. We shower because we want to be clean and fresh when we go down and rest and lie in bed. In the same manner, that we should allow the Lord to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, from all our sins, from all our dirts, from all our iniquities, from all the, the sins that we have accumulated in our lives. Because if we do not allow the Lord to do that, we have no part with Him and He has no part with us. That is what He explicitly told Peter when He said, Peter... If I don't do this, you have no part with me and I have no part with you. So I pray that in this Holy Week, we allow ourselves to be examined by the Lord and we examine ourselves. What dirt, what iniquity, what abominable acts have we committed that needs cleansing from our Lord, that needs cleansing from God? We need to be washed just like the disciples because if they are not washed before entering the upper room, Jesus Christ will have no part with them. In the same way that if our lives are full of dirt and sin, if our lives are full of immorality, of rebellion, of disobedience, of not wanting to serve and love Him, if our lives are full of all the things that we do that are against His will, we have no part with Him. And so we have to be cleansed. We have to be washed. Amen? The washing of the disciples' feet is a symbolism, another symbolism of cleansing and forgiveness and, and washing. At sa buhay po natin, mahal tayo ng Diyos. Gusto niya tayong pagalingin. Gusto niya tayong pagpalain. Gusto niya tayong makaranas ng Himala. Gusto niya tayong mapagpala, mabuhay ng masagana at matagumpay. Pero hindi po makakilos ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. Hindi niya magawa ang katagumpayan sa buhay natin. Sapagkat ang buhay po natin ay punong-puno ng karumihan at kasalanan at pagsuway sa Kanya. 
Kaya ang una pong hakbang na dapat natin gawin, the first thing that we have to do is to let ourselves be washed. Let ourselves be cleansed. And this time, not by the water in the basin, but by the blood of the Lamb that was shed on the cross of Calvary. By performing this humble act of service, Jesus Christ demonstrated again the value and the virtue of humility, which is very lacking in our society, which is very lacking in our churches, which is very lacking in our nation, which is very lacking in our government. For those who are in high position, humility, humility, and love. Sabi po ng Panginoon, do this. Love one another. Amen? Kanya po itong ibinigay na command sa ating mga, sa kanyang mga alagad. That's why, dapat po ito po yung gayahin natin. If there is one thing that we should remember about Monday Thursday, I pray that you will remember the humility of Jesus Christ when He washed the disciples' feet. How hard is it for us to humble ourselves, to remove our pride, and humble ourselves and admit before God that we need Him, that we need help. Amen? Humility. Jesus Christ demonstrated the example of humility when He did not bother going down and washing the disciples' feet. Lahat po ng dumi at kalyo ng mga alagad ay kanya pong nilinis. Hindi po siya naging maarte. Hindi po, siya, hindi po niya tinignan ang sarili niya na, hindi, master ako eh. Bakit ako maghuhugas ng paa? He was not bothered by this lowly act because he was showing the example of humility. He was showing how he loved his disciples. Mahal niya ang mga alagad. At ito ang kanyang pagpapakita ng pag-ibig at pagmamahal sa kanila. Ang lumuhod at kanyang linisin ang kanilang mga paa. At sa buhay po natin, maarahil tayo po ay tinatawagan ng Panginoon to show and demonstrate this kind of virtue, this kind of character as leaders in our churches. Jesus Christ was his, their master. Jesus Christ was the master of these disciples. It was, it was just, you know, uncanny and uncharacteristic for him to be, you know, going down and washing his disciples' feet because it should be the other way around. But it was not a problem with him because he was showing and demonstrating humility in the face of his disciples. And most of all, he was showing his love for them. That I am willing to do this for you. I love you, Peter. That I am willing to stoop down and wash your feet, cleanse your feet, because I love you. Because I love you. It was humility and love that pushed Jesus, that motivated Jesus to do this. And in the same manner that the Lord is expecting for, from us, the Lord is expecting from us these kinds of character, the humility, the love in our hearts, the love that goes beyond looking at other people's weaknesses and shortcomings, the love that is willing to accept the unacceptable, that kind of love that is willing to give even if the person is not worthy to receive what you are to give. This is the kind of love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross. And on this Monday Thursday, he set that example. He showed his disciples that example in the upper room where he had his last meal with them. He was willing to take off his robe 
and stoop down in humility and cleanse and wash his disciples' feet. Jesus Christ has demonstrated humility. And Jesus Christ has demonstrated that he is willing to do everything and anything just to show that he loved them. Kapatid, meron bang sinasabi sa iyo ang Panginoon? Meron bang pinapamahal sa iyo ang Diyos? Pinapatanggap sa iyo ang Panginoon? Handa ka bang tanggapin? Handa ka bang mahalin? Handa ka bang intindihin, unawain, yakapin? Sa kabila ng kanilang mga kakulangan, sa kabila ng kanilang mga shortcomings and weaknesses and failures, are you willing to show your love? Are you willing to show your humility? Are you willing to wash your disciples' feet? You know, it could have been easy for us who are in position and power to lord it over our constituents. But no, Jesus Christ set the reverse of an example by being a king, being a master, but he went down and stooped down and did the main work. He did the main job, the dirty job, washing the disciples' feet. And may we be able to get that example that if we are given power, position, authority, and responsibility, we should be the first one to go down and show the example of humility to benefit ang mga nakakarami. At sa buhay po natin, ngayon pong uh, Monday Thursday, may we be able to realize that this is what the Lord wants us to know and realize. Because the world is so lacking of humility. The world is so lacking of love. The world is so full of hatred. The world is so full of rudeness and unkindness. But God wants us to show the opposite of all these bad things. Let us be kinder. Let us be better. Let us love. Let us be humble. Let us be gentle. Let us be patient and faithful. Let us be joyful and peaceful. Let us love because these are the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Let us exhibit self-control. Let us show the world that we are children of God. That we are willing to go way beyond what is expected of us. We can step down and do the mean things, the dirty work. And it's no problem with us. Kapatid, mahal tayo ng Panginoon. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit siya namatay sa krus. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. I humble myself before the Lord and King. Just humble yourself, brethren. Open your eyes. Open your everything. There's no limit for the love He has for you. So humble yourself before the Lord and King. Raise your hand to God. I humble myself before the Lord and King. I open my heart, open my everything. There's no limit for the love He has for me. So I humble myself before the Lord and King. 
Kapatid, ikaw ay nanunood ngayon. Kailangan mo ang Diyos. Pagod ka na. Hindi mo na kaya. You are beyond your limits. You are beyond your strength. You are beyond your hope. And today, you just admit that. And so raise your both hands to God and surrender everything to Him and humble yourself. Humble yourself. Aminin mo na ikaw ay nagtiwala sa iyong sariling lakas. Aminin mo na ikaw ay nagtiwala sa iyong sariling kakayanan, sa iyong kayamanan, sa iyong mga narating. Aminin mo na ikaw ay nagtiwala sa iyong sarili. At ngayon, ikaw ay nagpapakumbaba. You are humbling yourself before God, admitting that you need Him in your life, admitting that you need Him. And so today, as you humble yourself before God, why don't you say these words? Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash away my sins. Wash away my pride. Cleanse me from my rebellion. Cleanse me from my disobedience. Cleanse me from my addiction. Cleanse me from my adultery and immorality and concubinage. Cleanse me from my lies and deceptions. Cleanse me from my addiction to nicotine and drugs and alcohol. Cleanse me from my pride. Cleanse me from all my sins. From my birth unto this very present. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. From all my iniquities and sins. Cleanse me from my religiosity and fanaticism. Cleanse me for trust trusting in myself and not trusting in you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me and cleanse me. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I need you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord, God, and Savior. I believe that you died for me on the cross. I believe that you sacrificed your body for me on the cross. Your body was bruised. Your blood was shed. So that I might be free. So that I might be forgiven. And so today, I accept you. I surrender my life to you. In the name of Jesus. Come into my life. Reign in me. Be my Lord. Be my God. Be my Savior. Be my Master. And let your will be done in my life. I humble myself before the Lord and King. I open my heart Open my everything There's no limit for the love He has for me So I humble myself before the Lord and King That is the prophetic word for you There is no limit for God in your life he can do the impossible. He can do the improbable. He can do the unbelievable. That is the prophetic word for you tonight. Believe. Believe. Because God will do the impossible with you. There is no limit. God is unlimited in your life. God is unlimited in your body. God is unlimited in your ministry. So receive in the name of Jesus Christ. The unlimited blessing of God. The unlimited presence of God. The unlimited breakthrough of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The Son of the living God. 
Yes, I prophesy that you are set free. I prophesy that you are set free in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The unlimited blessing, the unlimited power, the unlimited miracle, the unlimited healing is upon you right now. Just receive in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Kundara ba siya kataka? Nagpapagaling ang Panginoon. God is doing miracles. God is doing wonders right now. Yes! The unlimited miracle is flowing right now. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. From the north to the south, to the east to the west, the Spirit of God is sweeping and meeting every kind of need with the unlimited power, the unlimited anointing, unlimited blessing, and unlimited miracle receive in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Kundarabakai. Cancer is being held. Mental torture is being fixed by God. Anxiety is being ripped away by God. And He is just giving you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Just receive the peace of God in Jesus' name. God is strengthening weak bones, cancerous bones. He is healing it. He is restoring it in Jesus' mighty name. Even cancer of the liver, cancer of the kidney, cancer of the brain. The Lord is just doing miraculous things right now in Jesus' name. And if you are a COVID patient, and if you are a, a, a victim of this virus, in the name of Jesus, there is no... Nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. No virus, no sickness, no illness, no disease, no COVID that is more powerful than the name of Jesus. And so I declare that Jesus is Lord God and King over your life. And I declare healing upon you right now. Be set free in Jesus Christ's name. The Son of the living God. Ribi Yes, I prophesy upon this nation Healing and restoration Revival is coming in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah All, all I need Because He is more than enough He is more than enough Yes more than enough Jesus Christ is more than enough for you for your family for your business for this nation for the government Jesus Jesus Christ is more than enough because he is unlimited he'll supply all I need He is more than enough Jesus More than enough More than enough For me And receive that prophetic word Jesus Christ is more than enough for you The economy will crumble The world system will collapse but Jesus Christ is more than enough for you. You will never go hungry. You will never be harmed. Because Jesus is more than enough for you. Receive Jesus in your life. Receive Jesus in your family. Receive Jesus in your ministry. Receive Jesus in your cities. Yes! Jesus is more than enough for this country. Jesus is more than enough for this nation. Jesus is more than enough for each and every child of God who has put his trust in him and will never doubt him. Hallelujah. 
Ang mga tunay na anak ng Diyos ay hindi mamamatay sa gutom. Bagkus patuloy kayong mananagana ang sabi ng Panginoon. Sapagkat ang iyong ang inyong pagpapala ay hindi nakadepende o nakabase sa inyong mga trabaho, sa inyong ekonomiya, sa inyong mga pinansyal na katatayuan. Ang inyong mga pangangailangan ay matutugunan dahil sa inyong pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Kung ang kanyang buhay ay binigay niya sa krus ng Kalbaryo, kung ang kanyang katawan, kung ang kanyang dugo ay binigay niya para sa iyo at para sa akin, lalo't higit niyang matutugunan ang mga maliliit niyong pangangailangan sa araw-araw. He is more than enough for you. Receive that prophetic word in the name of Jesus. Pura ba si kita kalabakay? And I let loose the peace of God in these turbulent times, in these times of peril and danger, in these times of turmoil, in these times of apprehensions and skepticisms, in these times when people are in doubt and unbelief. I say unto you, Jesus is more than enough for you. Jesus is more than enough for you. Thank you, Jesus. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon. Magaling ka na. Lalakad ka. Pinalakas ng Diyos ang iyong mga buto. Pinalakas ng Diyos ang iyong mga muscles. Tinanggal ng Diyos ang mga bukol. Ang mga bukol sa inyong mga lalamunan. Tinanggal ng Diyos ang mga bukol sa inyong mga atay, sa inyong mga kidney, ang mga bukol at tumor sa inyong mga utak. Tinanggal ng Diyos ang inyong mga abnormalities ay ginawang normal ng Panginoon sapagkat ang Diyos ay higit at sapat sa inyong mga buhay. Kaya naman, wala nang matitira pa kundi pasalamatan siya. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon sa iyong himala. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon sa iyong kaligtasan. Thank the Lord for your salvation. Praise the Lord for your healing, for your miracle. Praise the Lord for your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For He is with you now, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To your name be the glory, now and forever. Jesus. Jesus.